Baldur's Gate 3 Honor Mode is absolutely brutal, and because you cannot save scum, you are forced to take whatever dice rolls the game decides to give you. So today I'm going to show you how to ensure that the odds are forever in your favor. Let's get to it. So we're gonna start off talking about conversations and making sure that you make those ability checks in conversations, and then we'll move on to how to ensure you get better rolls in combat. So your main ability checks for conversations are persuasion, deception, and intimidation. And for those, they are all influenced influenced by charisma. So ensuring that your character has high charisma is going to help ensure that you get better bonuses when it comes to making these checks. However, having more than one high charisma character in your party can be of a massive benefit. And this is because the Bardic Inspiration skill can give you huge bonuses to these checks. However, Bards can't cast this spell on themselves. At level one, Bardic Inspiration adds a 1d6 die to this check. At level five, it becomes a 1d8. At level 10, it's a 1d10. This means you could get a possible 10 bonus points to that roll. A bard themselves also gets the Jack of All Trades ability. This ability adds half of your proficiency bonus to your ability checks. So for example, if your proficiency bonus is four, you instantly get plus two to whatever you roll. Bards also get expertise, which allows you to add double your proficiency bonus when making an ability check. Check. Now, rogues also get this ability, but it's going to be better served on a bard because bards are already going to have high persuasion, deception, and intimidation. Rogues, on the other hand, would most likely benefit from this when it comes to doing something like a sleight of hand check. But I just wanted to point out that both bards and rogues get expertise. So having a high charisma character that is the face of your party and does all of your conversation stuff, that's maybe a warlock or a paladin, or even go double bard and it be a bard, and then having a bard that is also in your party, so it can cast Bardic Inspiration on the character, can help to ensure that you get absolutely insane bonuses anytime you need to do one of these checks. Now let's talk about some spells that you can stack on top of that. First off, there is Guidance. Guidance is pretty well known to most people, but we're going to put it in here because we're covering everything. But just in case, for some reason you don't know about Guidance, maybe you are new to the game, Guidance is a cantrip that allows you to add a 1d4 bonus to all ability checks, and you can add this bonus at any time you you are in a conversation and a check comes up. The next spell of note is Enhance Ability. This level two transmutation spell can be learned by bards, clerics, druids, and sorcerers, and it gives you advantage on ability checks. This spell can also be cast during a conversation when an ability check pops up. You can also use the Thaumaturgy Cantrip to gain advantage on ability checks, but it is only for intimidation and performance checks. But having this ability on one of your characters can possibly save you from using a spell slot if you get into a situation where intimidation is an option. Another cantrip that is a solid option to gain advantage on all of these checks that happen during conversations is the friends cantrip. The only downside to using this cantrip is that later on in higher difficulty modes, it is possible for the target that you cast this on to accuse you of enchanting them. Now, I have never come across this problem before. However, if you run around with disguise self on yourself, then you bring break that disguise when the target that you use this on isn't looking at you. So for example, go back to camp, take this off. In most cases, you should be fine. I would, however, make sure that you get rid of your disguise as soon as possible after using this, especially in honor mode, because if this is going to happen in any mode, it's going to happen to you in honor mode. So be careful if you use this cantrip. One big thing to keep in mind on a lot of these spells and abilities that just add a bonus to whatever you initially roll is that if you you roll a one, it does not matter because that is a critical failure. There are, however, a few things that you can do to help prevent this from happening, including rolling with advantage or the halfling luck racial trait. This is a racial feature for halflings that states that when you roll a one on an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you get to re-roll that dice one time and that you have to use that new roll. This drastically reduces your chance of ever rolling a critical failure. Another thing that you can pick up to ensure
or you basically have advantage whenever you want it is the lucky feat. Lucky gives you three luck points that recharge after each long rest. These luck points allow you to gain advantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws, or to make an enemy reroll one of their attacks. This can be insanely handy because it's essentially advantage on demand. Moving on to combat, let's talk about attack rolls because attack rolls are extremely important because if you fail your attack roll, you can't hit your target, which means you don't do any damage. A lot of the stuff that we've already talked about can also affect your attack roll. Things like Lucky, Halfling Luck, Bardic Inspiration. Bards also get Cutting Words, which affects the enemy's attack roll. Mages also get Portent Dice, which allow you to use one of those dice for an attack roll or a saving throw. Each day, you will get a set of pre-rolled dice, and whatever number those are on are the numbers that you can swap out some attack roll for. So for example, if you need a 15 to hit a target and one of your dice is a 16 and you roll a two, you can swap out that two for the 16 and hit the target. There are a bunch of different ways that most classes can easily get advantage. So first off, stealth, if the enemy does not see you and you attack them, you gain advantage on the attack. Also, there are a ton of different spells that can boost your attack rolls. To name a few, bless is a really popular one, adds a 1d4 to your attack roll. Bane is also a really good one to cast on the enemy. It subtracts 1d4 from their attack roll. Blind is an absolutely phenomenal spell because it gives you advantage on your attacks towards the blinded target, and it gives that target disadvantage on their attacks against you. Essentially, it makes sure that you can hit the target, but the target is going to have a very difficult time hitting you, which is just good all around. Invisibility is also fantastic because this is the same as stealth. If the enemy cannot see you when you attack them, you attack with advantage. Fairy Fire is another fantastic spell that allows you to easily get advantage on your attack rolls, and it is a level one spell. This spell states that the spellcaster conjures a brilliant light. All targets within the light turn visible, and attack rolls against them have advantage. And to try to keep the runtime of this video short and save you time, I'm just going to quick fire off a few other spells here that affect attack rolls, either giving you advantage or the enemy disadvantage. There is Bestow Curse, Blur, Guiding Bolt, Mirror Image, True Strike, Darkness, and Fog Cloud. I'm sure there's plenty more that I have missed here, but this just gives you a general idea of all of the different options that you have to help influence attack rolls. And we cannot talk about attack rolls without talking about Radiant Orb. There are a bunch of different items that have this effect on them that allow you to apply it to an enemy in some fashion. I actually have a build guide that is centered around Radiant Orb and shows a lot of those items. I will link it down below so that you can check it out if you want to learn more about this specific condition. But what it does is it adds a negative one debuff to enemy attack rolls per each stack of Radiant Orb they have. So just in case that's not clear, for example, if they have five stacks of Radiant Orb, they have negative five to their attack rolls. And most of these things can be combined. So for example, you can put a few stacks of Radiant Orb on a target, let's say five, to reduce their attack roll by five. You can then cast Bane on them to reduce it anywhere from another one to four, and you can cast Blind on them to give them disadvantage on their attacks. It's also important to know that when you see a weapon that has a plus and a number on it, this is an enchanted weapon, and that number is added to attack and damage rolls. So the higher this number, the better, as it is a flat modifier to your attack rolls. There are also some spells that can add this bonus to a weapon, for example, the magic weapon spell, which is a level two spell, and at that level two will add a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls, simulating having a plus one enchantment on a weapon. This can also be upcast to gain a plus two bonus and at level six, a plus three bonus. Your proficiency bonus also improves your attack rolls. So whatever specific skill for whatever ability you are using, you are proficient in, that will get added to the attack roll for whatever you are doing. So an example of this is if you are attacking with a melee weapon, that is either going to, in most cases, be strength or dexterity. So if your strength proficiency bonus is a plus four, that means you get a flat bonus of plus four to whatever your attack roll is. And last but not least, I want to talk about the karmic dice. This is something that is enabled by default, and essentially what it is is a loaded dice that tries its best to balance rolls in order to keep them from doing something like rolling a one five times in a row. Now the chances of that are very slim, but what ends up happening is it balances the rolls to a point where 
where everything just kind of hits this midline and it not only affects you, it also affects the enemy. And it makes a lot of these different spells and different advantages kind of pointless because it's going to find a nice medium line in there and tend to follow that line. So I highly advise turning off the karmic dice. You can easily do that in the settings menu as you see me doing here on screen. This turns the random number generator inside the game that simulates rolling dice into a true random number generator, ensuring that you help to see the real effect of all of these abilities. Hopefully now you have a really good idea on how to ensure that the odds are always in your favor by combining many of these spells, abilities, and techniques that we have talked about in this video. And if you found this video helpful and informational in any way, please consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you're looking for some more Baldur's Gate 3 content, you can find a link to another one of my videos on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.